talk to me down what's your last line there's plenty of these we can do and if you like these videos hit the like button hit the subscribe button and tell us what danger shot or recovery shot you want us to tackle we'll tackle it for you the third one high we shot we got high shot and then we're going to do low shot so you literally around the green having a little bit more imagination than just yeah. your chipping club every time thinking about it a bit slightly yeah, differently that's yeah. something i noticed with really good chippers is that they have options they're not afraid to play it either yeah, absolutely so let's start with a high one talk about that and then we'll go for a low one and in between okay right so the basic high one i'm sure you're using a bit of loft yeah so i've got my um my 60 degree yeah um again pin is pin is kind of like middle of the green there but we've got not a great deal of green to work with but obviously this would create a little concern for a lot of people having a bunker in front of them then going towards a pin so it still amazes me to this day how many golfers i play or see amateurs who don't have a lob wedge yeah a lot of them don't do they and they I go 56s wow, or 54s like, I, I, yeah give yourself maximum. some options yeah. if you haven't got a 58 or 60 or something around there in your bag definitely something to think about so how would you play this quite basic kind of chip shot i'm take i feel i imagine isn't it yeah i um for, for this particular shot here, I'm, we've still got a little bit of green to work with, so I don't need to go silly, what no. I call silly Hollywood shot here. Um, I like to just put that ball position actually a little bit further forward in my stance. Okay. So I feel like I'm almost like scooping it as I come through. It's yeah. not kind of what's happening, but just feeling like I can almost help it up as I come through the shot. Shaft lean or no shaft lean? I tend to keep it pretty centered, so I don't lean it this way. I certainly don't lean it little i don't lean it back too much i just try and keep it more here because i've got plenty of loft yeah plenty of loft here and again i don't try and open the face up too much especially for this shot i've got 60 degrees of loft i don't need to be opening the face up too much i see so many players coming in they've got this this thing up like open like this and then it's just way too much loft so and then for here i'm just trying to make sure i keep good speed coming through the shot not going to quit on it wait forward slightly and then just accelerate through the shot. Need a little bit more oomph, but a pretty good shot for height. You just need to hit that fraction harder, but the right idea. Just strike the fraction healy and a fraction low. Yeah. It's obviously killed it off the face a frat bit, but it, it still was plenty enough to get me up there. So I'm the same as you, choosing my most lofted, which is a 60. I will put a little bit of twist in the face. Yeah. Like a fraction. Like if we're there, I'm going to do that because I just want to basically introduce a bit more bounce. Yeah, okay. Like a bit that. more nervy. Yeah. So I'm an 08 bounce here, but I'm probably adding four or five degrees of bounce to this. Yeah. No shaft lean, ball slightly up, wider stance, and again, a bit of speed. So I'd pop it up. Yeah. If your mind's going much higher, because I did twist it that little bit more. Yeah, you just had a bit more loft to it. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a shot that I think lots of people play. I see them playing very, like they use their lofty club, but then they only have the straight kind of action for it. Yeah. They don't have a handle back or level or twisted open straight option or even cut across to try and get it popping up. So having your most lofted is good, but not being afraid to add loft to it, I think is important because when it's really tucked, that's what you want to do yeah let's go lower so i've got now my 46 degree so my pitching wedge yep um i'm gonna play again i don't mind again i like to introduce a little bit of bounce yeah so i'm just gonna slightly turn it open i'm gonna stand ball pretty central i'm gonna do pretty much nothing with my wrist just turn and turn through yeah and try and literally it's a little pop down there basically okay so it's almost it's as close as i get to a putt i mean i've even played some of these where putter grip stand upright and literally just Put it forwards. I see so many people get in this situation, choose that lofted club again. Like it's such a difficult shot yeah. when you've got hardly anything to go over. Just get it on and use the green. Yeah. So you've got a nine iron so again, you've got the same conundrum, I guess. Right, well, you're going more upright putty style. Yeah, there. I go I go very I actually actually use kind of I mean I'm cross-handed, but I kind of use a different grip, so yeah. I kind of use a more of a conventional putting grip. Because you want to take those um, hands out of it like a putt, just, I guess. Just want to, that's what makes me feel like I can stand more upright to it, use it like a putter. Yeah. Very almost no wrist hinge at all. Yeah. Just trying to keep it as simple as I possibly can. And then just bump it forward, get it onto that front of that front part of that green there, and just bump it forward. A little bit of speed and let, let it release down. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a simple shot. 
again, if we were to go and put our 60s in this position, I yeah. would call that not as simple now. No, but what you do see, and what the guys that, I, that certainly come into the shop and talk to me about chipping and things like that, they see a lot of tour players out there using their, what they look like, their sand wedges yeah. and lob wedges. Now, don't get me wrong, there are players out there, very good players, that will manipulate the loft. Yeah. They will use, their, they've, they've just they've created a great skill that's enabled them to be able to use that um, uh, use the loft in a different way yeah. but obviously they use the sole in a different way as well when they're, when they're manipulating that so it is a skill that you can learn and it's a skill that works for lots of good players but to simplify the whole thing that's as good as it can get really yeah the other thing as well with this situation is that I mean I've played when I went and played Torrey Pines for the first time if you're here you're in grass this long yeah you got no run option it's literally your lob wedge open it up and you are doing what you see the film make with some magic shots yeah it's understanding your environment you know we're pretty good at the run shot i grew up on links courses and places like torquay where the fringes are relatively friendly and tight so you're actually a bit scared of using loads of loft yeah. because it's so tight it's the other way around so that's the other thing i think what well, your point where people get confused is that they see him doing that yeah but that's because the situation dictates that basically now the other option we've been able to control your loft and this is a very hard shot I, I don't reckon I can pull this off I reckon you can so let's pretend I couldn't stop it on a down slope up slope in front of me and let's pretend that green ran away yeah. being able to be good and aggressive and have that imagination with the lower loft as well as your 60 now gives you an option to pop it in the bank and shoot it up now don't use this shot unless you have to it's so hard but again where the better players excel is you put them in silly positions and they surprise you. You put amateurs or lesser kind of uh, experienced golfers in these situations and they often don't ex to surprise you at all. They do the predictable wrong shot or duff or what have you. Having these skills doesn't also mean you have to use them all the time. It just means you've got the option when you need it. But I think people sometimes forget, like if you watch the US Open, which is just gone, yeah. we're watching the leaders. All the time. So yeah. why are we going to see them doing the crazy shots? Because they, they're like, Brooks Koepka's chasing them from behind. They can't just get it on the green and take a putt. They have to. Yeah. Or we're watching Brooks try to chase. He can't just get on the green and he's going to try and push it. Mm. So again, having that skill set when you need to try and push it. You're over your handicap and you don't want to go up and you've got four holes left. Maybe take this on. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's having those options. Yeah. Um, this is just not a nice shot. So I've got a pitching wedge. I'm going to go back in my stance because I quite like the down speed. Boom, into that back. Kill it into pin. it. Oh, Ooh, jam it in the Didn't flag. get enough pop, but I mean, it's not the best place to do this, but I'm trying to ram it in there, and that's kind of what I did. Yeah, okay. Um, again, I remember as an amateur when I was playing more, my chipping actually had some skills to it. This was a shot I had to use. Uh, I hated having to do it because it's tough, but I knew I could take it on. Yeah. And we've seen this shot a bit on our vlogs. Yeah, we've had a go at this, haven't we? Yeah, it's certainly when you're it's, playing um, four ball better ball, which yeah, people do you, at clubs met, and yeah. stuff, or you're playing match play and I you agree. do need to do the do. I agree, yeah. I always like, though, when I'm playing these types of shots, like, I would, I always try and get the ball. I never like jamming a ball into a slope. Okay. Like, I, I really try and avoid that at all costs. I'm either going over that slope and taking it out, or I want it to bounce short of it and then run up the slope. That's what I'm always trying to do. But round here now, you can see it's a little bit thicker. Not, so not that's get a the run. Not going to get the run to come through there. So I. But nine iron, one bounce at the bottom. I reckon you could almost get two bounces on that. I, and I get... almost want the second bounce to be just literally on the on the cuff there, you know. And again, this is the skill that better players have. Listen to your imagination there. Mm. What all the math is ticking, you're doing, ticking you're just, away, like yeah. really trying to work it out. Yeah rather than just choosing one club and playing that one shot. So ball position back in my stance, handle forward, just taking that loft off. I'm trying to almost deliver sort of eight iron, seven iron loft here. And then there. Yeah, so the just second bounce that, was slightly I too high. I missed it probably like by that much. Yeah, I literally was. Well, second it bounce was literally yeah. a foot too yeah. far, but it's the imagination to know what you were trying to do. Yeah. That You know what it's like as kids. We would get on the screen. You'd mess about with and this. And you're going to try and take it. The yeah. harder it gets, the more fun it gets. Yeah. And then you know you're going to get that situation at some point and you've actually practiced it. Yeah. Again, I see a lot of students not practicing these at all, any of this series of yeah. shots. And you get out here on the. Like I get them hitting shots in front of the launch monitor, indoors, flat bay. You know, I think, how are you playing off the handicap you are? 
you get out here on a down slope, a situation like that, under a tree, and you think, ha, right, yeah, you're letting all those go. How many fairways do you hit down that lens on average in a round? I reckon if you're hitting 50%, you're doing quite good. So that's 50% of the time you might be having to do what we're doing here. How many times do you hit the greens in regulation? Let's say you're hitting eight greens in regulation. Well, there's 10 times if you're getting it near the green where you're doing what we're having to do here, improve these shots. Post comments down below if you want to see some other ones that you've been in not sure how to do them. We will tackle them out here for you. Hit that subscribe button, hit thumbs up if you like this series.